The RTX 5090 is almost upon us and I have the full specs. Let's talk about it. Before that, if you just built or bought a new PC and you don't want to spend $200 on a Windows 11 Pro license, well, thankfully, VIP CDK Deals has just what you need, offering excellent prices on games and software, and right now, you can get a Windows 10 or 11 Pro OEM key for a great deal. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off, bringing the total to just $23 for Windows 11 and $17 for Windows 10, and you can even find great deals on products such as Office 2019. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate your new copy of Windows, just search Activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. All right, so everybody and their grandma is looking forward to the RTX 50 series because it's promising to bring a ton of performance improvements and some VRAM improvements, at least on certain SKUs. And one such SKU is the RTX 5090, as it looks like, although a lot of previous leaks and rumors did turn out to be correct, I actually was underestimating the amount of VRAM it would have. Originally, I was expecting 28 gigabytes, but it looks like, at least according to a video card's Com article that know the RTX 5090 is indeed going to be coming with 32 gigabytes of VRAM, according to some information that was scraped from Zotac's website before it was promptly removed. I'm pretty sure NVIDIA was not happy that this leaked, but there's even more than that, guys, because we even have more confirmation coming from apparently a post from Acer. Once again, this is coming from a videocards.com article where they did list both the RTX 5090 and 5080, and the 5090 has 32 gigabytes of VRAM, G DDR7 in this post, whereas the RTX 5080 has 16 gigabytes of that same GDDR7. Although it does sound like the clock speed between the two could be different, though we'll save that for a future video. Today, let's focus in on the RTX 5090, because if this does indeed have 32 gigabytes of VRAM, which is starting to sound very likely and does actually kind of coincide with some similar leaks that we've seen from people such as Cop87 Kimi in the past, well, then the 5090 is going to be an incredibly powerful GPU and a massive leap in terms of performance when it comes to stuff such as 8K or super high resolution VR gaming. Those applications, or maybe even 5 5K, 6K, stuff like that, super high resolution stuff, is going to see massive benefits from not only the increase in VRAM, but also the increase in the bandwidth that would be necessitated to give you that VRAM. What am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at the RTX 5090, the full specs based on these recent leaks as well, stuff from Cop87 Kimi, Red Gaming Tech, and a lot of other stuff that I've heard. Now, here we have the RTX 5090, which is going to be cut down from what could potentially be a Titan AI, which would have the full 192 SMs or streaming multiprocessors, whereas the 5090 would have it cut down to 170 streaming multiprocessors, which you can think of as the cores, much like a CPU, although it is different, but you get the idea. Now, in terms of the boost clock, we have heard rumors that apparently this GPU could potentially be reaching over three gigahertz, but in order to stay within a reasonable power envelope, I don't think they're gonna be able to achieve over three gigahertz on the at least stated boost clock. I think it will be going from the 2.52 gigahertz on the RTX 4090 to 2.8 gigahertz, which is still a pretty significant leap. So you're talking about a massive leap from 128 SMs on the 4090 to 170 on the 5090, which is roughly 33% more cores. And you're also talking about roughly 11% higher clock speeds out of this GPU. And I'm also hearing that apparently this GPU could actually be seeing, I don't know if you'd call it IPC gains, but the architecture is gonna be tweaked and should be faster overall, though we'll have to wait and see whether or not that pans out. But the largest jump here is coming from the VRAM and the memory bandwidth. 32 gigabytes versus 24, that's actually a 50% increase in the VRAM. That's crazy, and the actual memory bandwidth is even more wild. I mean, we're talking about going from 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X on a 384-bit bus for 1,008 gigabytes per second to now with the 32 gigabytes of GDDR7 running at 28 gigabytes gigabits per second on a 512-bit bus. And fellas, that's a big deal because if that actually does turn out to be correct, which is sounding like it's very likely at this point in time, this can be the first time we've seen a 512-bit bus in a very long time. This does tell me that NVIDIA's kind of shooting for the moon 
on this graphics card and it's gonna be very powerful. 1,792 gigabytes per second is a 78% increase in memory bandwidth roughly over the RTX 4090. So in select scenarios where you may have been memory bandwidth limited, it could be possible you could see over a 70% increase in performance out of the RTX 5090. Now, that's probably not gonna be the average performance increase that you see on this card, but it could be technically possible. It should also be increasing the cache, at least according to Red Gaming Tech, up to 128 megabytes, which is a very substantial increase over the 72 megabytes on the RTX 4090, although it is possible that could be cut down to say the lower 100s. We'll have to see when it's actually released, but if they do go for 128 megabytes of cache, that's gonna be absolutely insane and could not only help the ray tracing performance, but could be a big reason as to why this GPU might have, well, higher quote unquote IPC if that turns out to be correct as well. Now, in terms of the power, we're likely talking 450 watts. I know people have been throwing around 600 watts, but that is, from what I understand, the total board power maximum. So much like the RTX 4090 could technically go up to 600 watts if you unlocked it for the entire board power, GPU plus memory, etc. The same should be true here for the RTX 5090. It's gonna be a little bit more efficient than the RTX 4090, but it's also gonna be a lot more powerful. So I think they should be able to keep it with Thin, that 450 watts if what everything we're hearing about this card turns out to be correct. Now, in terms of the actual price performance and the release date, what can we expect out of the RTX 5090? Well, everything I'm hearing is suggesting a price somewhere between $1,600 to $2,000 with 1899 being the most likely price point to be targeted by the RTX 5090. And although I don't like how expensive this is, when we consider that cards have actually sold very well at $1,999 in the past, well, I think it would be foolish of us to expect too much less than $1,899, and I think even at $1,899, yes, it will likely sell out. Now, in terms of the performance, I mean, is it going to be worth $1,900? And I think for those of you out there who do have a very high-end system, the answer is going to be an immediate yes. There's no competition from AMD or Intel in this tier of graphics card, and so quite frankly, you're just going to have to stomach the $1,899 if you want. Wait for it a 47% increase in performance. I don't know about you guys, but with the RTX 4090 costing $1,600, this giving you nearly 50% more performance for going from $1,600 to $1,900, would absolutely be, in terms of price to performance, a massive improvement and definitely worth it for those of you out there looking for the best of the best. That's a crazy increase in performance and certainly is something I'm very excited to get my hands on if I can actually do it on release, assuming they have enough stock and you can actually buy one, which I think they will, but it's probably gonna be a situation where, yes, on the first you know week or two weeks, it'll probably be a bit of a mad rush to try and purchase one. But what about the actual gaming performance? I mean, sure, on paper, 47% higher, that could be achieved, but in practice in gaming, I think you will see roughly a 40% increase in performance at 4K. Now, in terms of, say, 5K, 6K, or 8K gaming, it's possible that you could get closer to that 70%. I think it could happen in select scenarios, but for the vast majority of people who will be using this card at 4K, I think it will be closer to 40% in rasterized performance. Now, in ray tracing, it could far exceed that. I'm thinking possibly 70% or higher. We'll have to wait and see how much the ray tracing has been improved. Who knows? It could be as much as 2X, but the information is just thin on the ground at this point in time, so it's a bit of an unknown. So just count on at least 40% more, but probably higher. And with the release date, at least according to leaks online, suggesting that it should be January 2025, likely at CES, though we don't know for sure, keep that in mind. Well, this is gonna be coming up, if that's true, very, very quickly. But hey, this is what I think. Do you think that the RTX 5090 will be worth it at $1899? And how fast do you think it will actually be? Do you think it'll be 40% faster, 70% faster, or maybe in ray tracing close to twice as fast? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, See you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.